kick it off with the midterms. They're now 18 days away. I want to bring in pollster extraordinaire Frank Luntz. Frank, it's nice to see you. Happy Friday to you. Although I wonder, you know, I've been reading a lot of your work and following along, and I have to tell you, you've been very scared at the proposition that all the conversations around election deniers aren't just sort of this esoteric thing about our democracy being in peril. You think past might be the immediate prologue. Tell me what your thoughts are. It's possible. And this is based on focus groups and surveys that we've been doing over the past couple months. And the intensity of the anger of the rejection of our political process has actually grown over the last two months. And we know the gentleman who's responsible for it. One of the challenges right now is to ensure that our democratic process is respected, appreciated, and most importantly, trusted. And what we are finding right now is the same kind of fear that people had, the same kind of anxiety about the electoral electoral process that happened in 2020 in the weeks leading up to it is happening right now again in 2022. And while there's no presidential race at stake, Mm -hmm. there are Senate races, governor's races, secretary of state races, attorney general's races in the local states that could make a meaningful, measurable impact on whether or not people trust our election system. Now make no mistake, A lower percentage of Americans trust our institutions, and that's everything from education and hospitals to Congress, the Senate, um, uh, Supreme Court. It's not just political. It's all of our institutions. And if that trust then is lack of trust is passed down to our to our electoral system, God help us. What will bring us together? What will get us to work together side by side? How will we find the ability to govern? I mean, that's the, the big question. And as you mentioned, I'm glad you've expanded beyond, obviously, the presidential races that will come up in two years and thinking more about who would have an immediate impact to act on that distrust. Secretaries of state in particular, a lot of focus has been on the Senate races. I understand why and the balance of power in the House and the Senate. But I mean, if you're thinking about what Congressman Liz Cheney had to say during the January 6th hearings, the last one, she really articulated the idea of maybe the blueprint, and I'm paraphrasing here, But maybe the blueprint is to ensure that those who are responsible for overseeing elections are more inclined to maybe find those 11,000 plus votes or whatever the number is. Maybe they're more inclined to to back down and not demonstrate a bit of spine. Is that part of your concern, particularly in those races that aren't getting the most coverage? Yes. And in fact, it's why the Georgia secretary of state is a true, genuine hero that he's the man who stood up to Donald Trump and wouldn't find those votes and went public about it and has continued to press it with other secretaries across the country, that your party is secondary. Your country matters more than anything else. And I want to make that point for your panelists, because I know you put on Republicans and Democrats. But the truth is, on the new CNN, we're more than just partisans. I think we are. We're about the country. We're about the future. We're about democracy and economic freedom. And that requires us to call out those on the right, Donald Trump, and frankly, those on the left, Stacey Abrams from four years ago. We need to call out those who simply refuse to accept the election returns because that is an acid that eats away at our confidence and mm-hmm. our country and our future. Well, certainly I hope at CNN we are journalists, not partisans. But I'll tell you this, there is a comment that I keep hearing about time and time again. And I'm really curious about your reaction to it, because we've been doing a pulse of the people here on this program. And Allison Camrata had one that featured um, a, a voter who said, look, hold on a second. I doubt this election cycle for the same reasons maybe that People doubted 2016, different reasons. But truth of the matter is, how do I have confidence if everyone wanted to doubt the integrity of that election and the absence of interference? And then now in 2020, no one says boo in that same category. Can you respond how you view that level of or that thought process that these are somehow equivalent? Skepticism is legitimate. And in fact, it's welcome in our country. And that's one of the reasons why one of the most highly prized values right now is accountability. The idea of being able to grab someone by the neck and say, wait a minute, you promised X and you gave us Y and that ain't right. Mm. But that's different than cynicism. That's different than rejecting the entire system and teaching your kids and telling your friends that there's no reason anymore to support democracy. 
the fact is there will be millions. It's going to be a high turnout based on our polling right now. But there are millions of people who won't vote because they will think that their vote either won't matter or won't be counted. And it's up to the people who run these elections to demonstrate, to prove without a shadow of a doubt that your candidate may not win, but there is a value in participating. And that's why we have to be careful about what we say, about how we communicate, because this is a very precious, fragile system right now. Mm. It's our responsibility to make it stronger. A republic if we can keep it, right, Frank? Thank you so much. Nice hearing from you and hearing your insight.